All right, just another sit rep here. Um, I went ahead and got the intake manifold taken off. All this stuff is pretty low drama and easy, which is why I just kind of gloss over, you know, getting it taken off is because there's not really much magic to it. Um, the only thing I just wanted to expand on, I, I think I've, you know, preached it quite enough. Um, so, so these guys right here run every single one. Um, there's no split washer, anything like that. Um, two issues with that is one, it, it looked like the intake manifold was canted slightly towards the side, um, because it, they, what they probably did, my guess is they tightened up this side first and then they tightened up this side second. Um, so they clamped it in and then they just kind of dealt with whatever they had left, um, because the, the, the intake manifold was cocked a little bit to the side. These bolts were very easy to come out. These bolts were kind of like, like jammed up against the, the, um, side of the bolt hole and you know, RTV it's glued in place and everything like that. So even though I had all of them loose, there really wasn't much movement on it. Um, furthermore, these right here were like finger tight. These right here were a beast. And then it just kind of, most of these were just barely, I mean, just, just move the wrench and it just spun right off. So, um, again, I hate, I hate these Allen headed rolls cause they're just a pain in the butt to take out. Um, everything about them just sucks. So moving on, um, <clears throat> cooling system. So we can see a little bit of corrosion right here, right there. Um, got a bit more going on right there. So it's a little bit dirty. Um, not too bad. I don't think we were leaking any air, any vacuum, but I know for a fact we were leaking this stuff. And, um, a lot of these bolts that I took out of the centerpiece right here had oil in them. So we were losing a little bit of oil. Um, probably not a much to really, you know, not a whole lot to really notice. Um, something to note. So obviously this block isn't supposed to be orange on the inside. Um, it, you know, it's obviously a rebuild and something to consider if you're doing your own, um, your own engine painting is if you'll notice there's missing a lot of paint. So if you look at this, you can kind of line up the missing paint is in between each of the cylinders. And my guess is it, it kind of coincides with, um, you know, maybe spraying, spraying brake cleaner on it, something, some sort of a solvent or something that kind of like broke up the paint. And then just as they put miles on it, it it's circulating through the oil system. So this is the kind of stuff you got to watch out for. Um, I had an engine rebuilder that I would use back in the day that would, you know, he, he would do all of his, uh, you know, he would paint all of his, his cylinder heads and stuff he did for me, but, um, he used a, a paint is more of like an epoxy that once it was on there, it, it was really cool. It was kind of almost like a ceramic where, um, you know, it would chip if you impacted it, but whatever chemicals you put on it didn't really affect it. I really liked it. Um, so just if you're novices or whatever, avoid using, um, just spray can rattle can engine paint, because when you start using chemicals, and things like that, it's going to get that crap in your oil system. So um, one of the parts of this whole venture we're doing, I am going to do an oil change. We got a little bit of coolant, but because I drained most of it out, um, it's not too bad. But again, it's just the coolant sucks. The oil looks like it's a little bit dirty. And we just want to, um, with whatever changes we're making to the motor, I want to make sure it ends up, um, you know, just being serviceable and, and the dude can drive it for five, six months before doing anything to it. Moving on, so this right here, um, this is the intake manifold surface. Doesn't look that bad, but it, there's like slight, slight hints of corrosion. And it kind of goes back to what I was talking about before. Let's see if I can get in the light better. So there's gonna be some corrosion right here. And we had that crappy Allen bolt, you know, the, the, you know, the, the Allen head bolt is leaking a little bit. So we don't have corrosion inside here. We have corrosion where it was leaking. Um, flip side of that, this right here, this is um, this is kind of puffed up. And I got this razor blade right here. So we're just gonna investigate this real quick and see what that is, because that's not aluminum. And gross, whatever it is, it's leaking out. It actually is like saturated. So what is that? Is it RTV? That might be good. Might be good for us here. So, looks, it's coming off in one sheet, but it does not feel like RTV. And I'm not sure if it's some kind of like a lack, like a shellacking or something. 
feels like epoxy and I really hope that's not just rotten aluminum that'd be really bad in fact oh no okay there we go so this is exactly what I was talking about before when this stuff sits it gets freaking nasty and so I've just picked this out and um, it's not it's not aluminum but this is exactly what I do this is actually um, like a two-part epoxy like um, you like almost like JB weld so this stuff um, intentions were good but it didn't seal properly and so this is soggy like when I was when I was putting pressure on it it was a soggy mess disgusting and um, you can see just the amount of corrosion right here now this intake manifold um, pretty high quality the deck on this is probably close to half an inch so we got a pretty good amount of meat on there for it to, to burn through before we actually come up with pinholes on the other side but what I'm gonna do with this is get really aggressive with a brush a steel bristled brush and get this um, all chipped out you know get this nice and chipped out take a drill um, drill these out and get some shiny aluminum on it and then instead of using the JB weld like like this guy did which you know good effort um, good thinking but it just wasn't enough um, so I'm gonna use RTV I've never had that stuff come loose so RTV um, just good stuff I really really like it and we don't necessarily need a flat surface because um, we're not necessarily sealing anything but see like right here right here is going to become a problem in a few years if we let this corrosion go um, in fact at some point you get that motor hot enough it's going to create a little bit of a pinhole right there and and you're going to have some serious trouble so i might end up having to get this repaired um, the more i look at it and it depends on how much of this stuff i get picked out but um, my guess is this might have been some sort of like a you know like a swap meet buy that it's like oh cool spur of the moment we're gonna buy this cool intake manifold and then when they get it installed they're like oh crap this might not be everything it's chalked up to be um so you know the more i look at it this we're looking at right here maybe a 16th of an inch as far as ceiling surface goes and um i mean that's going to be just a roll of the dice so i'm gonna have to break the bad news to my buddy here and see what he has to say about it because that just sucks so um i've never welded aluminum before i got the mig I just need to buy the gas, um, depending on what trout we go. Um, this is going to be kind of interesting. So I'll talk to him and kind of get some updates and see what he wants to do. Um, other than that, I think I'm probably done for the night. All I have really left to do on the motor here, I'm just going to pick these off, um, clean up the mating surface, and, and kind of go from there. Now these look like um, these look like Mr. Gasket intake gaskets. I am not a fan. I've never been a fan. Let's see if we can get any brand names on this joker. 